record. Hey everyone, we're group two and our project was to track the spread of coronavirus. So we actually chose this topic back in February, well before the coronavirus had spread and affected all of our lives like it has. We saw the need for an effective set of visualizations that would help people understand how the disease was spreading and how it affected our country. We landed on focusing on testing data to do so, as most other trackers focus on confirmed cases and deaths. And we believe that testing data gives a better illustration of the strain on our US healthcare system. We worked with data from the COVID tracking project, as you can see here, to create visualizations with unique metrics. We cleaned this data, converting dates, removing unnecessary columns, and replacing NA values. Then we binned this data by day and extracted the relevant features we needed for our static visualization, like the ratio of positive tests to total tests. We then created new data frames with these ratios, as well as data frames to analyze the spread of the virus in the states with the highest number of cases. So for our project, we decided on a variety of visualizations. Um, we have a series of graphs and then an interactive map to represent our data. The first graph here is a stacked bar graph, which represents the ratio of positive and negative tests in each state. And as we can see here, New York and California are standouts for the highest number of tests. The second graph here um, represents, has the US states on the bottom and the y-axis that represents the percentage of positive tests in each state. Um, as we can see by the fill of the bars, uh, New York and New Jersey have also the highest number of positive tests. And then the final graph represents the percentage of state population that has been tested. Um, and again, the fill represents the population of each state. So as we can see, California and Texas are two of our more red states because they're the most populated. And we would have assumed at the beginning that because a state is more populated, that they would have had a higher number of tests, but we can see that that isn't the case. Here we have graphs picturing the infection rate by state. For the first visualization, the scale follows the amount of cases in New York, which is the state with most cases, while the scale in the second graph is smaller in order to better differentiate the spread in each state. We also applied GM Smooth to both graphs to more easily visualize the trend, which is a thick blue line. From the smooth line, we can see that infection rates across all states appear to be flattening out, which can be justified by social distancing policies. Even so, we as a group believe it's hard to rely 100% on this regression line, and that integrating data from upcoming months would allow us to reach a better conclusion. Um, here we have general data concerning the spread of the virus. It, it has been interesting to observe how the data has changed since we started working on the project. 20 days ago, for example, total cases in New York were around 190,000, which is crazy to think that we've, been, that we've seen an additional 100,000 cases in 20 days. Um, here too, we have visualizations showing the total tests and categorizing them by positive and negative results. It's again clear that New York has most tests, positive and negative. Um, and it's also interesting to look at California's irregular trend line, which can be represented by a difficulty in reporting test results. For the second part of our visualization, we wanted to make an interactive R shiny map. So to do this, we did some additional cleaning by creating another data frame using the daily state data and then joining that with state latitude and longitude data so that can be plotted on the map in R shiny. Here's a little snippet of some of our code with the UI and the server so that we can create a slider that adjusts for days and show the progression of tests over time. So we'll show you the R shiny application. And this is the application. As you can see, we have the total number of tests in the larger gray circles with the positive um, number of tests in red in the smaller circles. So you can zoom in and then click on a state in order to see the state name, the positive, and then the total number of tests. You can also adjust this over time as it starts at the most current day. Um, you can go back to around March when there weren't a lot of cases. There also wasn't as much data in our COVID tracking project, but as time progresses, there's been more and more data from state public health officials that's been incorporated, and the dots are a lot smaller because they're being compared to the 280,000 total positive cases in Thank you.